So Tree Speech is a project that I organized in collaboration with Sustainable Jersey City in which I assigned Twitter accounts to Jersey City Trees and, and recruited residents to tweet in the first person from the tree's perspective. So they would say, I am feeling great because the sun is shining today or I um, you know, am feeling annoyed because this squirrel is scratching me with its little claws. So the trees chose names for themselves naturally develop their own personalities and would tweet between each other which is sort of reminiscent of the wood wide web the underground uh, fungal network that trees use to communicate um, and, but they would also tweet to uh, just passers-by who would see the tags on tied around those trunks that would identify them as having Twitter accounts they would also tweet to Jersey City government to advocate for better G tree care So my tree's name was Dante, and he sat in front of Dante Alighieri Society. And Dante is the poet who wrote Dante's Inferno. And I thought it'd be great because there's this little piece of Italian culture in Jersey City. And the tree was sort of half uh, poet, half tree. So he would quote parts of uh, the Inferno, but then he also would talk about uh, traffic around Journal Square, or, but he was sort of, at all points had like a literary flair to them. Well, I've got two trees. Uh, the first one is near my house. It's a really large uh, London plane tree, which I learned while doing this project. I didn't know what kind of tree it was and somebody told me. Um, and I named it Gabriel, uh, or Gabrielle, I should say, for Gabriel Garcia Marquez, who's a like, famous Colombian writer. It's down the street from a Colombian restaurant, so it seemed appropriate. Uh, my other tree is downtown near a burger restaurant, and I named it Anthony after Anthony Bourdain. And I thought it would be really funny if the tree were carnivorous and we're always talking about how much it wants like bacon and burgers and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, it was really fun coming up with like a personality for my tree. Um, I decided that he was gonna be kind of like a old guy, like kind of cranky and wise. And so um, another tree in our neighborhood, Junebug, was a little tree. And so Junebug and uh, my tree would have little uh, interactions where we'd like, you know, exchange advice and about how to be a tree. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. This is Junebug, and she's the youngest tree on the block. It was early June and the city had just planted a whole row of trees on the block and they were all really um, beautiful, young, vulnerable looking trees. And since Junebug was the smallest and just so happened to be right across from my front door, um, we, we decided to become friends. We, we had to kind of find out how to, how to help her grow and, and thrive here. So she'll often just be open to suggestions from some of the older trees that she tweets with and concerned citizens who, who know a lot about trees. For instance, we learned that we should keep this kind of loose and it shouldn't be choking her. And we learned that from another older tree who was tweeting us, I believe. It really prompted me to kind of create a personal connection and take on responsibility for at least one tree. And then take on a certain amount of responsibility just for the, the other trees, uh, Junebug's sisters and brothers who are planted right beside her. Um, so, tree speech was a great opportunity and kind of gentle instruction to start doing that. Two years ago, the Jersey City Environmental Commission did a study on our tree canopy and found um, that 20% of our trees are dead or dying, and they recommended that for a city of our size and with this kind of climate, we should add 30,000 new trees. So it's great that the local government has committed to planting 5,000 more trees, but more is needed and that's something that Tree Speech is advocating for and trying to get more people involved in. 
So the tree behind me, his name is Moribund, which means close to death. Um, his name should really be Death now. Uh, but I like to think he's got a little life left in him and I live vicariously. Oh, actually, he lives vicariously through me now. And uh, so that's his name, Moribund. Yeah. I expressed that we were looking to maybe um, go out with something inspirational and she came back and said, okay, what about a social media campaign on Twitter called Tree Speech and making it fun and having it be a storytelling uh, you know, platform where trees are actually telling their own stories. And I just thought that was fabulous. I visited two classes at middle school number seven in Jersey City Heights and told them about tree speech and seven kids decided to create trees of their own near their homes. When people ask me why I did the project, I would say the main purpose is to d develop a sense of stewardship for the trees because in cities especially that is really needed. Um, and also in doing so to develop empathy, which is kind of a, you know, might be a strange thing to think about is having empathy for something that's not a human, not even an animal. But um, I think that really happened by the end of the project.